So, G Idol, the girl group that is often referred to as the monster rookies of the fourth generation, after debuting with their lead single, La Tata, in May of 2018. Crown. Whether you have heard of this K-pop sensation or not, I hope that this video helps you respect their grind just that little bit more. My name is Summer and I go by she slash her pronouns, so please bear that in mind when referring to me in the comments section. I am in love with Idol and I hope that this video helps you learn a lot more about the group and what they've been through to get to where they are today. Idol consists of six members. Soyeon, Myeon, Minnie, Sujin, Ugi, and Shua all have a very important position in the group and have all equally contributed to the group's successes since their debut. It's taken these girls just over two years to become one of the most successful and most talked about girl groups of their generation. Given the state of Cube Entertainment before their debut, how did they suddenly become Cube's secret weapon? How did their success come about? And what did they go through? to get to where they are today. Welcome to the rise of G Idol. Before we get into Idol's story as a group, we should get you familiar with the members' backstories so that you understand what they've been through to get to this point of their career. So let's start with Soyeon. Soyeon was born in 1998 in South Korea and is the leader, main rapper, center and producer of the group and introduced herself as Idol's charismatic leader. Every step, one day you say you saw it first, saw it first. Soyeon drove two hours to audition at Cube, and once she officially became a Cube trainee, she instantly became booked and busy. Cube knew what she was made of, and so she soon became a participant on the popular survival shows Produce 101, where she placed 20th place in the last episode, and Unpretty Rap Star 3, where she placed 3rd. During her Produce 101 stint, she faced a lot of hate comments based on her appearance. A lot of the comments said that even though she was talented, she wasn't pretty enough to be an idol. These comments really put a dent in her confidence as she started having doubts about whether she should really pursue being an idol as a career. But she took all of it in her stride and despite facing these ill comments during her teenage years, had courage and commitment to stay on her path. Soyeon started writing from a young age and was very shy about it at first but went on to follow her dreams as a producer. Soyeon made her solo debut in 2017 with the song Jelly, which was written and produced by her. It is important to note that she has also written and produced a majority of Idol's discography today. In addition to songs made for her own group, she also wrote songs for her seniors, CLC and Namju from APIC. She is known for being the fastest female rapper in K-pop today and is currently holding the record of 8.32 syllables per second with her rap on Queendom. Yo, you got it? Yeah, 
Soyan's dream is to be awarded with the Singer Songwriter Award one day. Mion, Idol's main vocalist and a member of the Visual Line, was born in 1997 in South Korea and was introduced as Idol's power vocal. <laughs> Mion's passion for music began when she was just a toddler, as she would often record herself singing to proudly show her family and friends. She always had a deep love for music and was heavily influenced by her father. She began learning various instruments including piano, guitar and violin and even began taking MIDI classes in school to learn how to compose and produce music. In 2010, when she was just 12 years old, Mion began her life as a YG trainee after her friends suggested that she auditioned for this company. After five years of training, Mion decided to leave the company in early 2015 and then went on to join a vocal academy shortly after. During this time, Mion took classes in producing and composing, got her GED and became a freelance singer. She went on the Urban Zacapa Canada tour in 2016. And in 2017, Mion appeared in the So Long's You music video. Sometime in between 2016 and 17, she was suggested by someone she knew to audition for Cube Entertainment. Mion, who had given up the path of an idol, had to prepare an audition in a short amount of time, but successfully passed. She was immediately added to the lineup where she would debut in 2018 as the main vocalist of Monster Rookie Girl Group Idol. Born 1997 in Thailand, Minnie is the main vocalist of Idol. She introduced herself as the attractive voice of Idol and has always been very passionate about music. If I'm freaking crazy, you're freaking crazy, we're all freaking crazy. Why do you, why do you, why do you love me? I, I, I only need you when you don't need me. So why do you, why do you, why do you love me? She comes from a royal but also very talented family with a musical background. Minnie grew up with music and started taking vocal lessons at the age of four. In elementary school, she learned how to play piano for fun, and that's when she noticed that she had a talent for music. She always had a strong love for performing on stage in front of crowds, but music was not her only passion, as she was also a cheerleader and drummer in school. She was a student at G Vocal in Thailand, where her teacher suggested she audition for Q. So she thought to herself, why not try? And she passed the audition. But after passing, she wasn't sure if she should actually become a trainee, because she also wanted to attend university. But in the end, her parents convinced her to give it a try, and so she moved to Korea in 2015. On March 23rd, 2016, she was revealed to the public as a CUBE trainee. She featured in Soyeon's song, Smile. <laughs> And in June of 2017, she participated in a commercial alongside with Ugi and Shua, her future members. The same year, she was given the opportunity to feature in Line Friends' Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and six songs in Dance Party. In 2018, she'd go on to debut with Idol and she made many friends there while being especially close to the so-called Thai line in Korea. And in the end, her hard work paid off and she went on to debut with Idol.
Sujin, born 1998 in South Korea, is the main dancer and the sub vocalist of Idol. She introduced herself as the Pretty Spring Girl and showed her passion for music at the Cube Edition in 2016. When she was a child, her mother signed her up for jazz dance classes. Her love for dance grew and she thought of becoming a singer. Not long after, she discovered Taekwondo and dreamed of becoming a Taekwondo master. But this didn't last long as her love for dance soon came back. She attended a dance academy, and when she became more interested in singing, she started attending a vocal academy. However, throughout her childhood, her father was against the idea of becoming a singer, and Sujin begged him for two years from the age of 13 to 15, until he finally accepted and allowed her to attend a Korean arts high school to chase her dreams. She was supposed to debut with the girl group VV Diva, but left the group before it debuted. She didn't give up on her dreams as an idol, and she received an offer from Cube Entertainment just before her third year at high school. She became a Cube trainee in 2016 and was introduced in Cube Tree in 2017. Sujin was announced as an upcoming member of Idol in April of 2018 and then continued to officially debut as a member of the group on May 2nd, 2018. Before she debuted with Idol, Sujin appeared in both of Soyin's solo songs Jelly and Idol Song as the Fox Girl. She was clearly enjoying her stay at Cube, and so she went on to debut with Idol. It's beautiful life. No idea, so it's Born 1999 in China, Ugi is the lead dancer and lead vocalist in Idol and introduced herself as G Idol's cutie. I'm off the deep end, watch inside dive. I never meet the ground. Cross through the surface, where they can hurt us. We're far from the shallow now. Ugi was introduced into K pop through watching popular variety shows just like Running Man, and soon after becoming a huge fan of Super Junior. Ugi was so intelligent as a child that she was accepted into one of the city's most prestigious schools, Beijing 101 Middle School. The school was reserved for the best and brightest students, with only the top 5% of applicants scoring places. But even amongst such a smart student body, Ugi was still one of the most intelligent there. The school had 14 classes assigned by rank, and child genius Ugi was in class 1. Given how smart Ugi is, her parents wanted her to focus on education. However, Ugi's true love had always been performing. As a teen, she was proficient in a form of Chinese folk dance called Dai. And she was, and still is, skilled at playing the goose hang, a traditional Chinese instrument. In high school, she showed her ability in dance, and she would also become the president of the street dance club at her school. Thankfully, despite her parents' skepticism, she took her chance and auditioned for Cube Entertainment in China in 2014. After passing, she left her home in China and moved to South Korea alone. She became a Cube trainee in 2017 and became the lead dancer and lead vocalist in Idol. And finally, we have the maknae, Ye Shua. Idol's sub-vocalist and visual, born in 2000 in Taiwan, introduced herself as Idol's visual maknae. <laughs> 
When Shua was a child, she dreamt about being an actress and told her family that she will be on TV one day. She got introduced to K-pop by her friends and this led her wanting to become an idol. To pursue that dream, she entered an art school and would sing and dance with her friends for fun until one day her friend took her along to Cube's auditions in Taiwan. She ended up being accepted at Cube Entertainment. It wasn't an easy decision for Shua to leave her family and go all alone to South Korea at 16, but she was dedicated to fulfilling her dreams. In 2016, Shua became a Cube trainee and during her pre-debut era, Shua appeared in Yu Son Ho's music video, 10 cm Pet. As a trainee, Shua had a hard time because of the language barriers. When eating out, Shua would always order ramen because it was the only thing she was confident in saying. Shua says that she would talk to her fellow member Sujin, and despite the language barrier between them, she would still listen until date Shua is very thankful for that. Monthly evaluations and her lack of abilities put her under a lot of pressure. She would stay alone every day, practicing until midnight, and when alone, she would often cry. The first time she told her members about the troubles she was facing, they encouraged her, and despite all the ups and downs, they stayed by her side. Shua thanks herself to this day for not giving up on her dreams and following her passion for becoming an idol. Now that we have covered the pre-debut stories of each member, I think it's time to move on to Idol's story as a group, from debut to how they got to where they are now. Cube Entertainment was prepared to debut a new girl group, and they hoped the group would strongly represent the potential of fourth generation artists. This girl group was soon announced and introduced to the public as G Idol. After noticing Soyeon in the lineup, the public began to raise their expectations for the group's debut because of her appearances on the popular survival shows. On April 15, Cube released a video of them busking, which served as the first official announcement of the group. In the weeks to follow, Q posted introductory photos and videos of the members, as well as individual teasers for their music video. On the brink of Idol's expected debut, Cube Entertainment had failed to produce a title track for the group. Soyeon, however, took this into her own hands by writing lyrics and composing with Big Sancho for what became their official debut title track, La Tata. <laughs> La Tata received a not-so-substantial budget, but I will admit that the company used the money they had tucked in for these girls' debut quite well. The budget for this music video did not stop the public from emphasising how Soyeon wrote the girls' debut song and the major role she had in the production of their first studio mini-album by writing five out of six of the songs. On May the 2nd, 2018, Idol made their debut of their mini-album, I Am. On I Am's first day of being released, they sold just 260 albums. However, the momentum gradually continued to increase as more and more people came across the group throughout the month. The music video had gained over 2.2 million views in the first two days, and the album debuted at 7th on Billboard's World Album Charts, with it later peaking at 5th on May the 9th. Oh, 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 oh. 
Idol went on to get their first music show win on May the 22nd, only 20 days after their debut. At the time, making them the second fastest girl group to win in a music show. They then went on to collect another music show win from M Countdown just two days after. And then their final win for this year at the show. The group's debut was known to be one of the most memorable of its year, with them being dubbed as the monster rookies after showing how impressive they were despite having just debuted. Although Idol had a slow start, the album sales continued to increase drastically as people started falling for these girls whenever they appeared on variety shows just like After School Club and the iTalk vlog series that they began to release on their channel. The reason why people became so attached to these girls so quickly was because of the charisma on stage, unique voices and contagious personalities. People could relate to G-Idol. I can't explain why or how, but as soon as you listen to their music, you'd instantly want to know more about them. An important event that marked the first appearance of Idol as part of Cube Entertainment was the United Cube One concert that took place on June the 16th. It lasted around four hours and featured 33 Cube artists, including Hyanna, Joe Kwan, B2B, CLC, and Pentagon. Idol performed the hit song Latata and the songs Maze and Light My Body Up. They also did a special stage of bubble pop with Hyuna. <laughs> Bini, Mion, Sujin, Ugi, and Shua performed along with 19 other vocalists in the emotive song Follow Your Dreams, while Soyeon featured in Mermaid along with other cube rappers and Animal along with Joe Kwon. The concert was closed with the song Young and One, which featured all Cube artists. G 
just three months after their debut, Idol came back with their first digital single, Ham. Han, which was also written and co-composed by Soyan alongside Big Sancho from Yummy Tone, was released on August the 14th. The song had a very dark, somber concept and was described by Soyan as a cool song expressing from the word Han, sense of betrayal, saying goodbye and the feeling of being alone. She also mentioned that the makeup was inspired by the concept by using red eyes and a pinkish face to represent crying and feelings of sorrowness. Han did extremely well in its first week, debuting at number 14 on the Go On Digital charts, later peaking at 8th the following week, peaking at number 10 in its fourth week on the Billboard's Korea's K pop Hot 100s becoming America's top-selling K-pop song for two consecutive weeks, receiving two number ones on the Korean music charts, Bugs and Genie, becoming the top five girl groups with the most monthly listeners on Spotify, placing first on the girl group brand reputation rankings for September, and receiving three music show wins yet again for the era. Remember, remember what you said, Idol easily started standing out. You could not ignore the group's presence at this point because it seemed like they were really taking over. The members of Idol never imagined that very quickly after debuting, they would have the opportunity to present their hit La Tata in New York City. The result was the expected. Even the Big Apple wasn't too big for Idol. Enthusiastically, they held a small concert performing a flash mob of the song in Times Square during the day and the Washington Square Arch at night. Idol took over both places with confidence and seamless sleek dance moves. During La Tata era, Idol attracted the people's attention locally and internationally, not only for their amazing and impactful debut, but also when their success led them to become a very solicited group. Idol's growth really began to show as their debut album, I Am, surpassed 23,000 copies sold by the end of August. He got a babies, babies. Throughout the rest of the year, Idol also participated in several music shows and events where they covered famous songs such as Fake Love by BTS and You Go Girl by Lee Hyo Ri. After promotions had ended for Han, we thought we were about to hit a slight drought. But little did we know, a collaboration of the year hit us, and our leader participated in it. On September 28th, 2018, Soyeon appeared in one of SM Station's collabs with the legendary soloist Chung Ha, Sin B from G Friend, and Sogi from Red Velvet in the music video dubbed Wow Thing. <laughs> Collaboration was such a great opportunity for Soyeon to yet again show off her potential as a K-pop idol. The song was doing so well in the US World Digital Song Sales, and it was definitely not going to be Soyeon's last collaboration with SM. In addition to this huge collaboration of our leader Soyeon, Idol remained active during this year, performing several presentations in different locations. Covered songs like Brand New by Xinhua, Light My Body Up by David Guetta, Hot Issue by 4 Minute, 
and Sunny by Bobby Hebb were performed. It became an every month schedule of Idol. They were very active on their first year of debuting and were busy picking up all opportunities to promote their group. In November 2018, Riot Games, the founder of League of Legends, decided to create a virtual K-pop group called KDA. Now, Riot Games was already known for their music productions, having already done a virtual group named Pentakill, but nobody expected them to run and manage their own virtual K-pop group so successfully. Riot Games did a lot of research, watched and listened to a lot of K-pop, and they soon discovered members Soyeon and Mia. They were found during their pre-debut days, which is actually pretty impressive. Soyeon, representing Akali, a rogue assassin, and Mion, who represents Ari, a nine-tailed fox, were finally added to the KDA lineup with Madison Beer and J. Burns in 2018. KDA officially debuted with pop stars on November 3rd, 2018, which is currently sitting at 410 million views at the time of writing the script. Pop stars became one of the most viewed YouTube videos from the League of Legends franchise, uniting animation fans, K-pop fans and gamers together. Popstars was deemed an evident success after the song topped the World Digital Songs chart, making KDA the fourth K-pop girl group to top the chart and the fifth female act overall. This virtual group gave Idol a huge opportunity to be discovered internationally, and fans of KDA started becoming fans of Idol. Popstars was almost contagious as people were hooked to how charismatic this virtual group was and its human counterpart. provided their vocals and showed off their talents while representing the group in a live performance at the finals of the tournament. After witnessing Idol's activities, people instantly started reviewing their achievements and anticipating their presence at award shows. And before we knew it, it was the end of the year and the start of the award season. Do you remember, you remember, remember what you said? No, 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 there was a high demand for Idol, and making good first impressions was definitely the face front of the goals, as the girls damn well made sure that they would be recognized and remembered after each event by everyone from the outstanding stages. They were looking fierce and elegant whilst attending the red carpet, despite their slight lack of coordination. <coughs> And their performances never disappointed you. After all, they are the queens of stage presence. The amount of goosebumps you get when watching each award show performance is immaculate. Idol never fails. All of these stages ensure that you go away knowing that they were the group to keep your eyes on. This stage alone from the MMA Awards, just seven months after their debut, should have told us all something from the start.
there they were, the six girls that waited years for this moment alone. In 2018 and early 2019, Idol picked up a ton of awards, and by the end, Idol in total had 11 Rookie of the Year awards. Everyone was loving Idol at this point, and we were already anticipating the next release. Senor. 2019 came about in no time, and the girls had already been working on their newest release. Hey, senor. The public was already intrigued about what concept Idol would be going for next because of how diverse their concepts of Latata and Han were in comparison to each other. And before we knew it, Idol announced their second installment to the I series, I Made. The album had five tracks, Senorita, What's Your Name, Put It Straight, Give Me Your, and Blow Your Mind. I Made became the girls' second mini album that was this time fully written and co composed by Sawyer. Minnie also participated in the production of the album as she debuted as a songwriter and composer with the track Blow Your Mind. The lead track, Senorita, was a tango-inspired track with deep brass instrumental sounds used to help showcase the bright and colourful sides of the genre. During the production of the song, Soyan worked with Carlos Garrito, a Brazilian television personality, to help express the Spanish side of the song, Stronger. The girls described it as a song to show off their unique sides with a more dynamic choreography style, and it did just that. With its powerful choreography and upbeat tune, Senorita drove to energize and enlighten everyone in the room. Idol sold 9,580 albums on his first day, according to Hantail Chart. This was a huge jump from I Am, and it proved that they were gaining a ton of new fans by the era. <laughs> Senorita garnered 5.3 million views on YouTube in his first 24 hours and debuted at 7th with 1,000 downloads and 782,000 streams on the US World Digital Song Sales just two days after the song's debut, making it their fourth entry on the chart and their third as a group alone. 
The song also debuted at number 30 on the Gorn Digital Chart and then later peaked at 19th on the following week. It also debuted at number 26 on the Billboard's Korea's K-Pop Hot 100s, peaking at number 10 on the following week, and finally went on to get its first but only win at Show Champion on March the 6th. The girls went on to promote for three weeks, showing off their live vocals and glamorous outfits on the stage, and their growth, alongside physical sales, was easily noticeable through the fan chants during their performances. The intros for the stages were very graceful and pulled you in, and that one stage with the orchestral background was insane. But I can't show a clip of that because of copyright. Anyways, to conclude the era, they finished strongly and continued to work on the next project. Afterwards, Soyeon yet again appeared in another SM music video, featuring artist Key of Shiny, called I Wanna Be. And on April, Idol's first official soundtrack, Help Me, was released for the TVN Wednesday and Thursday drama called Her Private Life. As well as this, Mion also collaborated with rapper and member of Rhythm Power, Hang Zhu, in the song Card. But the biggest project that they had been working on was for the release of the summer song of 2019. In the summer of 2019, the girls released a hip-hop single titled Uh-Oh, becoming the girls' second digital single after Han. Soy wrote the song co-produced alongside June and Move. She wrote the song to clap back at the people who did not believe that she would make it as an idol. The song was a boom bap genre, which was prominent in East Coast hip hop music in the 1990s. Uh oh, ranked at number 22 on NetEase Cloud Music for China for the first half of 2019, making them the only K pop group to chart in it. It also peaked at number 7 on the Billboard's US World Digital Song Sales, ranked at number 23 on the weekly chart of South Korea K-Pop Hot 100s, and 31 on Goan Weekly Chart. Idol also ranked at number 12 on the top K-pop artist of 2019 on Spotify. And the girls went on to get their first but only win for the era at the show. During Idol's encore stage for Uh Oh, they ran around the stage kissing each other as a celebratory gesture for their win. But netizens didn't quite like that. They ate that shit and spit it right back out. Idol did end up getting criticised for this by netizens, so that's probably where they haven't done anything to um, gay on national television. Despite Uh Oh and Senorita being quite solid comebacks, the fans thought that the year was going quite slow for them and they needed something to lift them back up to their pedestal.
After a somewhat successful comeback, the girls were invited to participate in a show that helped idols showcase their talents as a group to an even wider audience. In late 2019, Idol participated in MNET's comeback battle program, Queendom, which ran from the 29th of August to the 31st of October. They went up against senior artists AOA, Lovelies, Park Bomb, Mamamoo and Oh My Girl. In the first round, they performed a remix of La Tata, which garnered them much praise with them placing first in that round and setting the standard for the rest of the competition. They performed the cover of 21's Fire in the next round, which received a lot of appraisal from the other contestants. Let's go! Minnie and Sujin also participated in a round titled The Performance and Singing Round, where the groups had to choose one member to dance and the other to sing. Minnie sang a heavenly cover of Dean's Instagram with AOA Haijong. And Sujin broke the internet with her dance to Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello's Senorita. They also performed a scary Halloween inspired version of Put It Straight from their mini album I Made, which gained them a lot of attention. <laughs> During the time they were shooting Queendom, Minnie collabed with a YouTuber and singer Wenji on their song titled Empire. Lay back, let him, let him build my empire which was released with four versions. A Korean version, English version, an English and Korean version, and an instrumental. Mini. Empire, my daddy. So giant mini, thought I have a mini. Maybe hell on it. Desserts, head to connect with me later. Kiss, kiss. For the final round of Queendom, they had a comeback with the song Lion, which was written by Soyeon, co-produced with Yummy Tone, and inspired by the movie The Lion King. The song was released on the 25th of October and was then performed in the final live episode. An awe-inspiring intro is opened with narration by Minnie, telling the story of a young queen, followed by Shua doing a solo dance while the girls then followed. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom, and a great war for the throne started. The war was so terrifying and ruthless to everyone. In the middle of a brutal battle, a young girl cried out, I am the queen. Everyone sneered at her, since she was just a little girl. However, she didn't listen to others, but kept on fighting. With her life, with all her might, 
After the long war ended, she returned as a queen. And those who saw her said, she is a lion. This was labeled as Shuazira. She was able to show off her talents and how much confidence she developed from previous eras. They finished the show as a second runner-up and to celebrate the success of their digital single, they released a regional and fierce music video for Lion, which was praised for its feminist messages by the public. Lion, which we later realised was actually not a title track but just a B-side, performed significantly well in Korean charts and overseas. Lion actually entered top 20 in the Merlin charts by peaking at 13 on the Merlin real-time chart. Lion also peaked at 5th on Billboard's World Digital Song Sales, charted for 27 consecutive weeks in the Go On Digital charts, received 470,000 streams on Spotify in its first week, and was named one of the best K-pop songs of 2019 by Billboard, Melon Magazine, SBS Pop Asia, IZM and Idology Korea. was something that we felt picked Idol up off their feet and boosted them even further through the industry as it granted them great recognition domestically and internationally. They promoted their group on the show in a very clever way and made sure that they stood out in order to gain the attention of potential new fans. But with every rise comes obstacles. After the episode The Fire was performed, the girls began to face a ton of backlash from international K-pop fans because of their cultural insensitivities that rightfully offended a lot of people, including some of their fans outside of Korea. This incident obviously created a bad image for Idol on social media, as it spread like wildfire. Their name was getting dragged by many her international K-pop fans online. But as well as this, Many people would take this as an opportunity to make insensitive jokes about the members too. In fact, the hate towards the members went further than holding them accountable, when people started calling Soyeon ugly, selfish and accusing her of being a bully. There were also very Islamophobic tweets going around about the group, which made Muslim Netherlands extremely uncomfortable. Fans were still very upset with the group, and the majority held the group accountable for their actions. Emails were spammed at Cube, fans demanded an apology in comment sections, and we even trended a hashtag in attempts to reach out to the company publicly. After many tries to get through to the company, fans finally got closure as a source close to the girls stressed that they cannot openly talk about it due to many external factors involved, such as their contracts with the company and broadcasting companies. 
As well as this, a fan had a conversation with a K-pop journalist who allegedly has links to the group that said that Idol have actually undergone many hours of education about cultures from around the world and insensitivity. Since the incident happened in 2019, Idol have shown their awareness about the situation on many occasions. Despite not being allowed to talk on the matter, the girls have indirectly shown that they have learned from their mistake and grew aware of the situation very quickly. Idol was facing a lot of backlash and misinformation being spread about them across the entire internet. They were wrongfully accused of appropriating cultures through many of their past concepts. People still continue to make false accusations about the group, and some fans grew afraid of their next moves. Idol is known to choose a variety of concepts for their performances, music videos, and eras. This is a big reason why some K-pop stands in general felt like they were neglecting other cultures besides Korea, or even taking credit for their cultures without proper recognition. Alongside all of this, People were also becoming detectives as they started accusing Soyeon of being greedy due to how the group's song lines were distributed to each member. Despite it being proven multiple times that each member has a voice in what parts they get, and that each part is determined on which member's voice is mostly suited for it, people that are not keen on the group have decided to target Soyeon specifically and create misleading line distribution videos, TikToks mocking Soyeon and Twitter posts about a matter that has nothing to do with them. This is the result of the situation that could get out of hand when people that are not even fans of the group will assume that something unjust is going on between each of the members. It can even lead fans of the group to believe these people causing them to understand or hate on a specific member. After Queendom had finished, Idol moved on to their next project. In November, Riot Games created a virtual hip-hop group called True Damage. Soyeon was added to the group and collaborated with League of Legends yet again to feature on the group's debut song, Giants, with artists such as Becky G, Kiki Palmer, Thutmose and Duckworth. They performed the song at the 2019 World Championship Finals in Paris, and Soyeon had a great time meeting and mixing with the other artists. Idol were fully booked, and I mean it when I say that. They were being paid for so many features, they had deals with so many other companies, and were ready to promote their group to not only domestic audiences, but also international ones too. Idol is known to be a group that set the industry's expectations high with their annual award show performances. and 2019 was no stranger to that. The girls took it a whole step further this year with their own award show performances of Uh Oh and Lion.
stages for Uh-Oh were very energetic, whereas Lion stages would demand your full attention, giving you goosebumps during the eerie cryptic intros. It seemed more like Idol was putting on their own show, reeling you in with the emotions they set on the stage. Idol went on to win several awards. Here are the main awards of 2019 that Idol won. We have the Groove Award by the Asia Artist Awards, New Star Award by the Asia Model Festival, World Rookie of the Year by Gorn Chat Music Awards, Rookie of the Year Digital by Golden Disc Awards, New Wave Award by Sorry Bada Best K Music Awards, Dance Performer of the Year by the Fact Music Awards, and the Global Rookie Top 5 by the V Life Awards. By the end of 2019, Cube Entertainment started to become more aware of Idol's potential. The year 2020 came by, the year that Idol's Queendom track Lion went on to receive a critical acclaim, garnering Idol a KMA nomination. The year that Idol was also set to have their first world tour, where they were going to finally make a move internationally. And 2020, the year that... Yeah, I think you know what happened there. The world tour was soon cancelled due to the COVID-19 outbreak, but the girls still chose to release their third mini-album. Named I Trust, this mini-album followed the dark and serious concept from the past Queendom release and KMA-nominated track, Lion, and was the first mini-album that received two versions of. The album included five songs, Oh My God, which was the title track, Love You, Maybe, Lion, and the English version of Oh My God. Clearly aimed more towards the Western market, this song represents just how well Soyan writes and produces a catchy and emotional song with deep lyrics open for interpretation for her fans, and how all of the members of the group added all of their unique qualities to make something very special. Some called Oh My God the lesbian anthem because of how the lyrics came across to many of the group's LGBTQ fans. If kissing each other during the Uh Oh music show win back in 2019 pissed off netizens, just wait till they hear this shit. All of the verses are about a woman who has fallen in love with another woman, but can't accept it because of the stereotypical views about the same sex relationships by a society who doesn't easily accept LGBTQ communities. As the song progresses, she understands that she should trust her love and her heart, and so she eventually breaks free from the mold. Soyan's writing allowed for people to identify and relate more to the song by directing it towards being more about the struggles of somebody in a society, more than about experiences in a homosexual relationship. Soyan also once said after the release of I Trust that music should not even be classified with genders, since music should be for everyone. A lot of fans were arguing whether Soyan included these lyrics for homosexual representation or other variations, but after this they mostly understood and the topic was soon dropped. But you're probably asking, how did the album progress? Well, 90,000 copies being sold in the first day was not what many of us expected, but cracking 112,000 sales in its first week? We all started to begin to notice how much Idol had grown since their previous years. I Trust was a huge success, becoming their best performing album at the time with 150,000 concurrent copies sold from South Korea alone. The music video became the 24th most watched music video in the first 24 hours and currently sits at 128 million views at the time of writing the script. Idol Spotify monthly listeners started to increase drastically and they topped the iTunes top album charts in 58 regions around the world, breaking the record for Korean girl groups during this era. After being signed to popular US record label Republic Records, clearly Idol had reached their goals to break into the Western market 
whilst also still having a huge presence in South Korea. For an album selling almost six times as more as their previous in his first week during a pandemic, and a promotion that was completely changed because of a cancelled world tour, it is quite remarkable what they had achieved in just the first quarter of 2020. The year started to become a very busy year for Idol. They were fully booked both individually and as a group all year after the success with Oh My God. After Oh My God's era had passed, we were afraid of facing another drought. However, Soyeon made it clear that an annual summer song is their group's tradition, but this year was a little bit different. Idol soon announced their online concert, I Land, which took place on July the 5th. Now, although I cannot show any footage of this concert, I will say that this concert was amazing. The girls performed their title tracks, some of their b-sides and covers of the songs Why Do You Love Me by Charlotte Lawrence, What About Us by Pink, What Now and Kiss It Better by Rihanna, performed in solo and as a unit by the vocal line members Minnie, Mion and Oogie. Undoubtedly, this was the most exciting part. The members had also released a song called I'm The Trend, which was a fan song produced and written by the members Minnie and Oogie, becoming the song of Oogie's debut as a producer and songwriter. There was some confusion at the time as to whether or not this song was the summer song that was discussed in an article from Cube regarding Idol's next releases of 2020. However, not long after the concert, Dumdi Dumdi was announced to the public and was revealed as Idol's official summer song of this year. In the meantime, Soyeon collabed with SNSD's Hyoyeon's track titled Dessert, which also featured rapper Loopy. Soyeon also wrote and composed A Pink's Namju's solo debut song, Bird. Soyeon immediately gained respect from the second generation artists, as in the past she had also collabed with Chinese Key. Soon after, Dumdi Dumdi released. 16.9 million views in the first 24 hours. Dumdi Dumdi became the 23rd most watched music video at the time. Fans were afraid of the song underperforming due to there not being much of a gap between the release of Oh My God and Dum Dee Dum Dee. But little did everyone know that this beautiful, refreshing and energetic summer song would set new personal records for the group. After his first week of release, Dumdi Dumdi started dominating and topping multiple Korean charts, and on top of that, internationally, by taking up 47 number ones across the globe on popular music platform iTunes. As seen on the Handeo chart, Dumdi Dumdi reached first week sales of 94,587 copies. And after just six days of the official release, Dumdi Dumdi had reached 50 million views on YouTube, which set them a new personal record. By the end of Dumdi Dumdi's promotions, the girls had surpassed their music show win just as they secured six this era and were left shocked at just how well this summer single did and the amount of support they'd been given from the general public. On August the 20th, 2020, 
KDA launched their official Twitter and Instagram account, and along with that officially announced the group's fandom name, Blades. Simultaneously, Riot Games released an image of the KDA logo, including the comeback date and the title of the group's pre-release single. On August 27th, KDA released the single named The Baddest, featuring Soyeon, Mion, Bia Miller and Wolf Tyler. This single reached first place in Billboard's World Digital Song Sales and the single currently has 39 million views on YouTube and almost 66 million streams on Spotify at the time of writing this script. Just two months after a successful pre-release single, KDA announced another single named More. KDA. This single was released on the 28th of October 2020, featuring Soyeon, Mion, Madison Bia, Lexi Liu, and Jaira Burns. After one day within its release, the song chatted on South Korea's major domestic music sites such as Melon, Genie, Bugs, and Flo. The song debuted at number two on the US World Digital Song Sales within one and a half days of it being released. It then also peaked at number one, and the track also charted at number 16 on China's QQ Music and peaked at number one on the QQ Game Music Chart. Currently, this song has around 53 million streams on Spotify and its music video has almost 62 million views at the time of writing this script. On October the 31st, KDA performed more at the Pudong Football Stadium in Shanghai, China as the opening ceremony of the 10th anniversary of League of Legends World Championships. But unfortunately, due to travel restrictions related to the COVID pandemic, only Lexi Liu was able to perform live on stage with the virtual KDA. On November the 6th, 2020, KDA released their first ever EP named All Out. This EP included five songs, The Baddest, Mo, Drum Go Dumb, Villain and I'll Show You. Besides the already known members of KDA, the tracklist included artists such as the legendary girl group Twice, Anika Wells, Biga Boom, Aluna and Wolf Tyler. Unfortunately, Mion or Soyeon were not featured in any of the other songs on the album. However, this EP peaked at the fifth position in the Billboard's world album sales and was included in the 25 best pop albums of 2020 staff picks by Billboard. On October the 10th, Minnie sang an official soundtrack titled Getaway for the K-drama My Dangerous Wife. On the 15th of October, Mion and Minnie sang in We Already Fall In Love for K-drama Do Do Sol Sol La La Sol. And besides that, Mion also sang My Destiny for the drama Tale of the Nine-Tailed, which was released on the 26th of November. In the year 2020, Idol received multiple nominations for Bongsang Awards. They won the Emotive Award at the AAA Awards and also won the Popularity Award at the Fact Music Awards. Although the year wasn't a slow one this time, due to obvious reasons, award shows did not live to the full expectancy of many fans. But Idol did go on to perform Dumdy Dumdy and Oh My God beautifully with their very catchy intros and even presenting us with dance breaks. a prisoner of my reason who wanted to set me free through salvation no god there is no need for divine love anymore because i'm no longer a 
prisoner. Idol also attended multiple festivals and they even collaborated with other folk generation artists such as Stray Kids, Itzy and Eyes One. You're looking fresh, so fresh. Yep, I'm the best. Go ahead and flex it. Turn up. Everybody be hating the way that you're still in the show. And as well as these collabs, Idol also covered songs Don't Touch Me by the Reef and Sisters at Show Musical and Listen to My Heart by the legendary Queen of K-Pop, Boa, at the MAMA Awards. Despite 2020's interference, the year wrapped up pretty well with Idol teasing that yet another comeback was on the way. It was actually announced that in 2021 that member Mion would actually go on to star in a lead actress role in the web drama called Replay, and Mini would also follow suit by starring in a new Netflix sitcom series called I Wish the World Would End Tomorrow. Listen to my heart looking for your dream. And before we knew it, Idol's fourth mini album and fourth installment to the I series was announced to the public on the last week of December. After the first concept preview was released, the fans started speculating what kind of album name they would go for this time. But nobody expected it to be called I Burn. I Burn consisted of three versions, Winter, Flower and Fire. This mini album greeted fans with six new songs this time, and the names are as followed. Han, Alone in Winter, Hua, Moon, Where's Love, Lost and Dahlia. And of course, Hua was the title track for this album. The title track Hua was written by Soyeon herself and was produced and co-composed along with Pop Time, who also worked on the past single Dum Dee Dum Dee. Yeah. Soyeon also co-composed two other tracks and took part in writing the other five. Minnie composed two tracks, Moon and Dahlia, as she also wrote the lyrics for Dahlia and arranged Moon. Oogie was also able to compose and write the track Lost alongside Soya, which is my favourite track on the album. The album was released on the 11th of January and started breaking records from its first hour of release. With high anticipation, iBurn reached 75,510 sales within its first day of releasing. Immediately after its release, Idol's Hua began charting at number one on the Korean charts, Bugs, Jigini, and Melon's real time chart, making them the first fourth generation group to debut at number one on Melon's real time chart and to enter Melon's 24 hour hits chart in just three hours. Idol also became the first fourth generation girl group to have their B-sides enter top 10 on Melon Real Time Chart and the entire album chart on Bugs in the top 6 positions of the chart. Yeah. Idol became the only girl group alongside Blackpink to have multiple B-sides enter the Flow Chart. The album received 51 number ones on iTunes, number one on iTunes worldwide and its music video trended number one worldwide and in South Korea. In the first 24 hours, Hua's music video reached 8 million views. And you may be thinking that in comparison to the previous releases, this is surprisingly low. But throughout the first 24 hours, Hua's music video views were being deducted by YouTube by the hour. But within the second and third day of its release, views started to increase tremendously, and the music video gained over 40 million views within this first week. In iBurn's first week of being released, Sales climbed to over 115,000, and the album garnered almost 9 million Spotify streams. Hua also debuted at number 8 on Billboard's World Digital Song Sales and reached number 5 on the Billboard's Hot 100 chart. Idol went on to get their first win for the era on the 20th of January, just nine days after the album released.
time. Cube Entertainment is not part of the big three. In fact, before Idol's debut, Cube was down pretty bad. I wouldn't say that Idol was Cube's last hope, but the group definitely did raise morale for the company. Some people say that Idol are privileged and have been taken care of since their debut, but honestly, Soyeon is the one that we should all appreciate because without her and her courage to write the group's debut song, the group would probably not be where it is today. Soyeon has established a lot for the group and has encouraged and inspired not only her fellow members but also other artists within the industry to get into songwriting and producing. These are the examples of factors that really help a group stand out above the rest, especially in modern time where groups, where girl groups especially are not allowed to be creative and they have to follow a certain style that was created for them by their company. If there was no Latata, Idol's comeback would have possibly been postponed and Idol probably wouldn't have been considered monster rookies. I think we can all agree that Idol deserve everything that they have been given from their light stick to their first world tour and multiple bookings with other companies. They built their way from the bottom up and developed their own genre that nobody can replicate. And that's what resulted in the rise of G-Idol. Oh,